Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, friends. I'm your host, Shashi, with you all on Women Dialogues to create more voice for women and by women. And today's our guest from Kolkata, India. She's connecting with us from Kolkata, Dr. Shauli Mukherjee. She's passionate and dedicated her life toward promotion of child-centric and activity-oriented education. She has more than 20 years of experience in education field. Currently, she's the director School of Education and Dean of Student Affairs at Adams University at Kolkata, India. So she has here with us to share a lot of wisdom, her experience by serving, by working with students of all ages from, uh, in, from earlier career to the now higher education sector. So let's welcome her to talk and learn on the Women Dialogue talk show from her side. So welcome Dr. Shauli on the Women Dialogue talk show today. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shashi for that warm intro. Uh, it's really a very nice opportunity for me to be on this platform today to share my views and insights. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shauli. It's a great pleasure to have you today. So as I was uh, briefing about your experiences, your uh, achievements, your career journey, it, it is really inspirational. And I believe it's uh, serving in education field itself a great achievement and great satisfaction when we are doing for students uh, while serving. And you, you have worked more than 20 years in this field. So as, as we are seeing now, Dr. Shuli, who is a dean, who is a founder, who, who was the founder and who is now a uh, director, you, you are having all those positions, how you reach on these positions, how it, it started your journey. Tell about your life journey first, how you reach on this uh, path uh, to make yourself uh, in that way. Absolutely. So uh, Dr. Shashi, it has almost been 20 years Mm -hmm. that I have been in the education sector now. Yes. So I have been the principal of some of the reputed international schools in West Bengal, India, mm -hmm. among which a uh, few schools have been exclusively founded by me as the founder principal, mm -hmm. among which I would like to name one special STEM World School, which is the first STEM school and which was also eventually awarded for being the second best international day school in the entire West Bengal region. So more than 20 years into the field of school education, leadership, teacher training, teacher empowerment. Uh, last year, I had actually stepped into, into the domain of higher education, right. where current of school of education and Dean Student Affairs at one of the premier universities of Eastern India, and that is Adamus University. Right. Additionally, I'm also associated with premier educational organizations across India, as well as globally in senior advisory capacity and position. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, as a thought leader and a motivational speaker, I almost speak very regularly and frequently on new international forums on topics pertaining to uh, the role of education in transforming people's lives. Right. Yeah. Also, additionally, I would like to state that apart from my stay of university currently in the higher education domain, Right. I'm also the executive director curriculum for mm -hmm. Charles Walter Society of Innovation and Research. Mm -hmm. And I am the executive director of ITYM Foundation, which works extensively and relentlessly towards youth development. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I am very, very passionate about mental health and emotional well-being issues. Yeah. And in that capacity, I'm related and associated with uh, some of the premier organizations globally. To name a few, uh, Jimha Australia, where I am the special board advisory for Jimha Australia. 
also Global Mental Health Association India, where I am one of the advisors, as well as the advisor and mentor for MISOHI, which works towards. Apart from that, uh, quite passionate about women empowerment issues. Mm -hmm. And in that capacity, I am related with Women Reform Organization, which is based in Nigeria. And I'm the brand ambassador and academic advisory for Women Reform Organization Nigeria, as well as I'm the chair of the education board for Hope Ambassadors and Child Care Organization which is also one of the premier organizations located in Nigeria. Apart from that, as a sports ent enthusiast, I'm uh, associated with uh, IGC, that is um, Indian Golf Circuit, as mm. the chief institute Northeast, and with Sports Academy Association of International Advisory Member. Apart from that, also I am the brand ambassador and state educational advisor from West Bengal for Wednesday Times, and also one of the also one of the ambassadors for Commonwealth and Entrepreneurs Club UK. So these are some of the current associations um, of mine, apart from my stint with the university. I think these are a wonderful achievement and accomplishment and engagement which you have shared with us. Uh, these uh, seems like a lot, but I believe you, you as you bring your women empowerment interest, as we all women can do more and more and having a real example like you, which is motivational and inspirational itself how we can do that. So when we are talking about your all achievement accomplishments, having those all positions, uh, how you uh, uh, can describe your management, time management, involvement, engagement, because uh, that might be a good way to start and give a little bit uh, to our audience, how one can, uh, you know, can manage their time by having all these engagements and at the same time, having their full-time job as well in university. Dr. Shashi, what I feel is that uh, if you want to do something, you will do it. If you don't right. want to do it, you will definitely find an excuse for right. it. Passionate about doing something. There's absolutely nothing and there is absolutely no one who can actually stop you from doing things. Yeah. So right from the very beginning, I would like to say that uh, I have always wanted to be in the, uh, you know, in the education space. And I would, mm. in spite of additional associations, if you ask me that, what is that one term which defines me completely? I would say that I'm a passionate academician. That is the first thing to define completely. So I've always wanted to work in the sphere of education and that is exactly what I'm doing currently. Very fortunately, I would like to say that there has been a conscious interest between what I love doing and what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. So there has been a very fortunate intersection between these two. And I'm somebody who has actually turned my passion into my profession. So. Based on that, I would like to say that even if, you know, uh, a typical day in my life looks like 15 to 16 hours of work per mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, all my close associates as well as my colleagues, they would normally term me as a tremendous workaholic person mm -hmm. who keeps on working for 15 to 16 hours per day. But I would like to say that I do that with utmost passion, zeal, energy, and vigor. So I never feel that I'm, you know, I'm compelled to do something. I feel that I'm doing something which I'm meant to do and which I've always wanted to do. So it all basically comes to the fact that if you have a greater purpose right. for anything that you would and if you have for, Mm -hmm. Definitely that purpose eventually acts as a kind of a strong magnet 
to pull you towards your vision and to keep you motivated and uh, you know so there is absolutely no thoughts like uh, how would i manage so it's right. all about how best i can contribute mm -hmm. and how best i can give back to the world yeah yeah that's so true and i think it's very well uh, you Uh, articulated and shared how we can change our perspective when we are talking about developing gro our self growth and bringing our uh, work and passion balance where uh, many time we we hear all these and many time we hear from uh, women or maybe those are struggling to these kind of challenges of management time management i think having this approach uh, would be wonderful to find fulfillment in their work and in their life as well so uh moving ahead when we are talking about uh, develop developing your own passion for as an academician as an education how it is how it all started uh, was it was from very early childhood uh, having such environment of uh, uh, at your home uh, parents home or how it all uh, tell about your early childhood journey how you grew up what kind of things Uh, made you to find that path uh well uh, to tell you about my childhood i would especially like to mention that i have been very very fortunate that i have been blessed with extremely liberal minded and open minded parents mm -hmm. so who had actually right from my very childhood had impressed upon the fact Uh, upon me that being firmly anchored and being firmly rooted to your core values even then you can expand your wings and you can fly and you can explore all the possibilities that you are capable of and even then sky is not the limit for you so it is from them that basically i had derived that sense of i would say purpose inspiration and motivation so basically my parents and thereafter as i told you that uh, right from the very beginning you know mm -hmm. i always wanted to be in the space of education to do something meaningful to touch yeah. to inspire to impact and to bring about a visible and tangible difference in mm -hmm. the people's lives around me through the power of formation the true education really brings about so that mm -hmm. is something which uh, i would say i had always been intrin intrinsically motivated to do mm -hmm. so that is one uh, aspect of mine now, right from the very uh, beginning i would like to say yeah apart from that yeah. uh, for the majority part of my life i had actually been a classical sir my uh, life i would say so uh, you know that was also one of my areas of passion uh right from the very childhood i was into classical dance i was into music i was into dramatics uh i used to write a lot i still write a lot and um are definitely a, a very very avid and a voracious reader as well mm -hmm. so these are some, you know some of the other uh, activities which i still um you know even i i i really uh, you know find out time for these uh, activities because that really uh, you know drives me forward apart from that i would also like to mention that uh, when i started my career as an educator way back uh you know before uh, you know back so in starting my career in uh, one of the reputed international schools of kolkata mm -hmm. but having said so i would also like to mention that uh, there have been there of self reflections and introspections where on almost on a regular basis i used to question uh and challenge the traditional and conventional educational practices right that give so much of weightage to a learner's ability to conform and comply and mm -hmm. gives very very little weightage 
to the learners' innovation and creativity. Right. So these had actually, I have always, you know, started uh, questioning them and challenging them right from the very beginning of my career. Mm. And of time, these uh, things actually started working as a very, very powerful trigger to introduce new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. And that had actually pushed me uh, eventually in days to come to move out of the system, I would say, uh, and to create and to, uh, you know, found, uh, you know, a, 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 a very different kind of a school, uh, which I would say was one of my past uh, assignments in wow. finding a STEM world school, which was the first STEM school in West wow. Bengal. Wonderful. So, uh, you know, continuously questioning and challenging the conventional and educational practices Mm -hmm. The more I was into it, the more I was realizing that the things that we have been doing are completely wrong. So mm -hmm. these are not going to serve the 21st century learners at all. So we right. all need a very different kind of a mindset. Being educators, we should be the torchbearers. We should actually lead the way for the future. But things are not happening in the correct direction. So, you know... Uh, I always had that urge to uh, challenge things which have become redundant, things which have become obsolete. Right. So uh, kind of a very striking combination, I would like to say that I'm, I have a very, very uh, beginner's mindset. By beginner's mindset, I would like to mean that and responsive to new ways of learning. Right. So I'm always fascinated by you know, all the new areas of learning and I'm continuously learning. So I have a beginner's mm -hmm. mindset in that. But at right. the same time, I also have a questioning and a challenging spirit, which is very, very lively within me, which constantly pokes and provokes me to challenge everything that has become redundant and that has become obsolete. I've acting triggers to make me ultimately, uh, you know, find a school which is which was such a very different school, you know, such a very unconventional kind of a school mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, if I can give you certain examples where uh, even I had done away with the textbooks in the school right. till a particular level, but there were no textbooks at all. There had been no examinations, no mm -hmm. standardized tests. Mm -hmm. So absolutely stress-free curriculum. So all these things I have actually created in that particular school, which had been a brainchild of mine. Mm -hmm. I think hearing this all, it, it shows how your passion, uh, which from very early age, you, you shared that you had passion for education. It bring your, uh, you know, beginner mind and formed the STEM uh, first West Bengal school. So when we are talking about it, um, as you shared, this new way of learning, new way of approaching and thinking and creating these uh, young brains, I will say, uh, to think logically, to think in different direction rather than conventional and traditional method. Uh, what way do you define in current scenario when we are talking about, uh, we are having this global pandemic and we, we are again, I, I feel we are again coming from conventional to something new. Today, we both are sitting uh, two different geography and we are talking, we are connecting. Mm, I think it, it, it is uh, different than conventional, then it is a new way of uh, connecting, learning, working. How you define that? How you feel uh, in the education field? it's going to be helpful or not? Absolutely uh, positive and helpful, definitely, because uh, I actually, in some of my um, sessions and talks, I normally say that thanks to the COVID times, which mm -hmm. had actually compelled all of us to think and act outside the box. Right. And to think on very, very different dimensions. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shashi, I'm sure you would appreciate the fact that 
our histories have changed, our geographies have changed. Fortunately, yeah. our current education system is still the same. You know, mm -hmm. it is right. still uh, that uh, kind of a system which has derived from the needs mm -hmm. and demands of the 19th century industrialization. Mm -hmm. So it is still that culture of one size fits all, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. there is absolutely no weightage given on a learner's individuality, creativity, right. innovation. Right. It is all about how much you can comply, how much you can conform, and how well you can compete. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our traditional and conventional educational norms always force our learners to draw and color within the lines, metaphorically. Right. Right. But it's so mm -hmm. ironic that we expect that same child in learner to evolve into an out of the box thinker when he or she grows up. I mean, yeah. how is that possible? You are indoctrinating that child right from the childhood, the values of drawing and coloring within the lines. You cannot expect that particular child to be, you know, an out of the box thinker suddenly overnight. Mm -hmm. That will never happen. If you really yeah. want our present generation to evolve creative, you have to give them enough leverage so that they can pursue the three essential P's. And by three essential P's, I mean play, passion, and purpose. Right. So it is a potent combination of play, passion, and purpose that could mm. actually make a person truly creative. And if you see the world right now, it does not require, I mean, COVID has made it so very clear that the world does not require mechanical minds, mechanical minds loaded with facts and figures, minds which are systematically formulated to think alike. No, it's not what it requires right now. What the world requires are Minds which are capable of out-of-the-box ideation, diversity. That is what the world requires. And as responsible adults, as responsible and parents, it is our moral duty to nurture that creative and inquisitive genius in our children so that they can evolve into a complete and full human being who is completely... Uh, you know, dynamic and equipped to face the challenges of a 21st century, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. It is our right. duty. Right. We cannot evade from that duty. We cannot, uh, you know, we cannot avoid that duty by saying that, no, this has always happened like this. And so, uh, you know, we're just going to continue the system. No, the system right. needs a revolution. Mm -hmm. Nothing short of a revolution will actually work for our current education system. I mm -hmm. even don't say mm -hmm. reformation. Because mm -hmm. if I say reformation, reformation would mean that, you know, repairing a broken model. But that is not what uh, our education system requires. It does not require any repair or a quick fix or a tweak. No, that is not what it requires. Mm -hmm. if, if, if we do that, it's again going to fail. As it is already completely failing, our education system is miserably failing. Yes. If you consider uh, very essential statistics, that 50% of the graduates, mm -hmm. those who complete their formal higher education, they do right. not even land into a decent job, somewhat decent job. Mm -hmm. And employers would moreover reconfirm the fact that more than 80% of the ones who to manage after completing higher education, not in that job. And they have to be re reoriented. So, you know, this is an evidence which shows that already our current education system is miserably failing. Mm -hmm. So we and need to do something about it. Right. And when we are talking about that our education system uh, need revolution, not, re, uh, you know, refabrication, 
and we we want to bring that and how much percent you feel uh, as i as i we were talking about this pandemic and we were talking about this new adaptation and new adaptation in education system of these technology imbibing these new technology allowing children to uh, learn these new ways are going to continue or will they will they bring back their own all their old traditional method as a educationist as a person who who you know serve uh, majority and her passion is education what way do you feel in our future generation uh, especially when we are talking in education in india what kind of approach do you think they are going to have will they bring back their old pattern or how they will imbibe or it is just temporary or it is giving them some learning or some time to really recreate and revolutionize education system which we are always looking for so i think that um, this one and a half years of covid uh, mm -hmm. the important lessons which the entire educational fraternity has learned from covid mm -hmm. that is going to be something which uh we are going to carry forward because mm -hmm. there is absolutely no way in which we can actually go back to the old ways of doing things which we have been doing in the pre covid era mm -hmm. absolutely no way to get back to those old times anymore and for so even as an educator i also ask this questions to myself that we have spent months doing something completely different trying to create a new normal for us as well as for our children mm. now when the situation is getting normalized or when the situation will be normal also should we now go back to the old ways of doing things that is one question mm. the second essential question remains that after months of virtual interaction to which our children have been exposed to but almost at the click of a mere button the entire world had opened up in front of them mm -hmm. along with newer vistas of possibilities now should our children be now back under the obsolete and redundant educational system once more should we again start teaching them to think and act within the box mm -hmm. and to draw and color within the lines so these are the questions which i think each and every educator should ask himself or herself mm -hmm. and if the answer to all these is a big no then we do not have any other option than to impress wholeheartedly mm -hmm. the benefits and the advantages of hybrid and blended learning which covid has gifted all of us with and so we have to accept yeah, so i will i will bring that when we are talking about education is how we can bring the parents role as a in the same manner how we can develop their mindset as well what what do you recommend what do you feel uh, you have experienced uh, since last one and a half year what kind of response and what kind of feedback you feel is still a challenge or a struggle being uh, as an educationist dealing with parents dr shashi i would like to two things especially first first of all uh, if you want to do something very very futuristic and right. progressive unconventional and revolutionary mm -hmm. uh, especially in the field of education Mm -hmm. so there are lots of challenges obstacles setbacks and resistance right because you have to deal and i'm i'm stating completely from my first hand experience mm -hmm. because when i had set up the first stem school in west bengal it was definitely not a very easy task it was a mm -hmm. very very challenging task because i had to deal with the mindsets of all the stakeholders mm -hmm. whether they are educators right education leaders policy makers management or parents right so i had to deal with the mindsets of all of them and very honestly and candidly i would like to share that unfortunately these are the mindsets which are very very resistant 
towards yeah. any kind of change. So very confident in thinking that whatever uh, is happening or has happened for centuries, I mean, this is the uh, this is the gospel of truth, and this is something which needs to be followed. Mm-hmm. As I told you a little earlier, that our histories and geographies have changed, but our education system has not changed. Our education system has not changed because mm-hmm. of the, because the mindsets have not changed. Mm-hmm. So here, definitely, the parents have a huge role to play. It is not only about the educators. Right. It is also about the parents who happen to be the first educators of a child. Right. So during the COVID times, something which is very positive, which I have also noticed, is that increased in the child's uh, academic activities. So okay. this is um, something which is very, very positive, which I have noticed in the last one and a half years. Parents have started taking interest. Parents have started being actively involved in the academic affairs of the learner. So uh, definitely when we are speaking about education, this is something which is a holistic concept where everyone has to come forward and be on the same page. So it's not only about a principal of a school or an education leader or an educational policymaker who is about to bring a huge change. So the huge change, if it has to see the light of the day, it has to happen first in your mindset. So the parents have a huge role to play here. Yes. And, and because it is the talking, parents. Yeah. yeah and yeah, when it we is are the parents who have to you understand. Are, you are bringing those parents role and we are bringing this comprehensive holistic approach for education for the coming generation. Uh, do you feel these coming generation uh, when we are bringing these kind of approach uh, while bringing all these um, educationist principal teacher parents are we are making enough uh, preparedness uh, for these uh, our gener- coming generation are they ready for that what way you feel are they are more uh, ahead to than us or they are also have developed that kind of mindset okay we we have to go with this process only there is absolutely no other option rather than to be ready for right. the changes because the changes, uh, it is, you know, the changes have already happened. Are you ready to change? That is the essential question now. So the changes have already happened. If you have to sustain and thrive in this 21st century VUCA world, you do not have any other option apart from changing your mindset. Yes. So either you change and sustain and thrive or you're out of the entire system. So mm-hmm. it is as simple as that. I mean, uh, here I would like to say that COVID has given all of us that much required push, which we all needed. I mean, we all knew in theory that things have to change. But we've had been so very reluctant in bringing that change into practice. But Mm -hmm. COVID has actually pushed you so much so that now you do not have any other option apart from bringing that change into reality. And which is so very positive. Yes, that's so true. And when we are talking all about as uh, you are a woman and who is always... Uh, believing, uh, bringing these innovation, creativity, and all these new changes in education system, uh, how you uh, would like to see other women, uh, maybe as a role of their, as a woman, uh, as a mother, as a maybe in any different sector, but we all play a role some sort of way as an educationist for our self, for our children, or maybe for our sibling, wherever we play a role, or maybe our friends, colleague how they have to change their mindset, how they can do that? Changing the mindset is something when you are completely open uh, to the changes that are happening around you. So when I said having a beginner's mindset, it is so very important for each one of us to develop, having Mm -hmm. that beginner mindset being flexible, open, adaptable, and responsive 
to all the new ways of learning. So there is absolutely no denying the fact that there has to be a lifelong learning and that one has to be committed to learning, unlearning and relearning at each and every significant phases of their lives. So it doesn't matter you are in which particular profession. You may not be in the profession of maybe right. like completely different corporate. Each and every sector, wherever you are placed, mm -hmm. it is a complete, it, it, is, it is a lifelong learning journey. You have to, you have to admit the fact and you have to acknowledge and uh, you know, be in terms with the fact that there will be a lifelong learning journey for you and that you will continue to learn. You will continue to learn and acquire new skills, embed new habits. And that is how you will actually evolve into a complete human being who will be ready to face all the challenges, the global challenges facing the world in the 21st century and beyond. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no denying the fact that, uh, you know, nobody can be complacent at this point of time and can say that I will not change mm -hmm. or I'm completely, uh, you know, against whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. So you have to see the positives and mm -hmm. you have to adapt yourself. Something which Charles Darwin had said long back. So you have to adapt yourself. Otherwise, like dinosaurs, we would also be extinct for decadent mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's very uh, helpful approach for our audience, for ourselves, for everyone who is listening and watching and beyond that, because having uh, adaptable, having those mindset of learning, keep yourself on the path of beginner mindset is very important. And when we are talking all these kind of things, what kind of message would you like to give to our audience and viewers who are listening and watching us? So uh, the message is something which is very clear, I would say, I would iterate uh, a, a number of times in the last half an hour that uh, your mindset has to be completely open. It has to be flexible. You have to open uh, towards all the new changes that are happening in front of you. So embrace this and into best, the highest and the truest version of yourself. Especially uh, since it is uh, the platform of women dialogues, I would also do special mention that it is not what society expects out of women. Rather, it is very, very important what we expect out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the real fight for any woman is to understand that the real fight is never outside. It is always within us. So the day we actually understand that the real fight is within us and it's not something which is external, mm -hmm. that we always mm -hmm. feel that, you know, things have to change so that I can have a better life. My spouse has to change. My spouse has to become more supportive. My in-laws have to become more supportive. The society has to be more supportive. But we have to realize that the fight is never external. The fight is always with. The day we realize that the fight is essentially within us, that mm -hmm. is the day when women would truly succeed, be it in her personal endeavor or in her professional life. Mm -hmm. Because every woman is actually a wonder woman who has the capability of nurturing, creating and transforming lives. And yeah. each and every time a woman decides to stand up for herself, she actually stands up for all the women. So I think that's very powerful, have... it's very inspiring and motivating message. And when we are talking uh, to women to stand for themselves and to understand their own within challenges and uh, how they can overcome, how you find having uh, such kind of talk shows and platform like Women Dialogue is 
playing an important role or it is needed? It is very much needed, Dr. Shashi. It is very much needed in the sense that uh, one of the greatest challenges, one of the greatest absence that we feel, the, the real life role models, you know? So when we see people coming on such platforms and sharing very candidly about their life journey, not only about their success stories, but right. behind each and every success story, are stories of challenges, mistakes, failures, setbacks, roadblocks. So there is nothing called overnight success. Right. So when once we get to meet people and interact with them and listen to their stories, which are full of the highs and the lows, which are full of the negatives as well as the positives, we sort of start, get, you know, identifying ourselves with them. And we really get inspired and motivated. And we also feel that, yes, if she can do it, why can't I? Yeah. So, platform very, very important. And, uh, you know, the more we uh, listen to those people, the more we hear them, the more we get inspired, positively inspired, and we get that passion back in us that yes, we can do it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for sharing such, uh, you know, important message and having such uh, motivation and inspirational feeling for this platform and for these dialogues where we, when we are bringing globally all these women from uh, across of the all globe, almost more, more than 47 countries, women have shared their journey um, on this, uh, you know, in the as a form of women dialogues, talk shows. So I, I, I feel, yes, as a speaker like you and many others who have shared their journey, they are here to inspire, to motivate, to create a journey, not for self, but for others who are listening and watching us who want to do something in their life, who want to create a movement for their own as called life. Uh, I think that way it's very important. So thank you so much for sharing your vision, your knowledge, your time with us. Thank you, Dr. Shuli. I would like to uh, say uh, that Dr. Shashi, you have been doing an amazing work through creating this kind of a platform for women to come in and to share their vision, their ideas and their stories, their stories of success, their stories of failure. So this is an amazing work that you have been doing, Dr. Shashi, and I would like to personally congratulate you on this wonderful endeavor. And I'm sure that a lot of women viewers would actually get positively inspired through the mission that you have actually created for yourself. So thank you so much for doing such a wonderful, uh, you know, activity and initiative and may God bless you. And uh, I am really so happy to come on this platform today and uh, having a very, very candid uh, discussion with you. Thank you so much. I'm so humble and honored to hear from you. And thanks to all our viewers who are listening and watching us as we all the time talking about learning. Uh, going beyond your capacity because that's the way we create our life. Get motivation, get inspiration. And that's why we are here with you in this life, in this journey. Here are speakers. Those are having wonderful life experiences, their journey, and to be with you, with your uh, journey. So don't feel alone. Share and connect with us. Share, subscribe, like. And if you would like to get connect with individual speakers who are coming on this platform, sharing their life journey, their details are available in the description as well. See you in the next time. Till then, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.